What's going on everyone, Bobby Max here and welcome back to my Crystal Palace rebuild here on FM24. This is an English only challenge where the players and the staff that we sign and recruit are English only and the challenge is to try and win the Premier League or the Champions League with an English only contingent. We're picking up right where we left off at the end of episode 3, season 3 and this will be season 4. So we finished fourth, uh, which is a downgrade on the previous season where we finished second somehow. This is the squad and it's not particularly big. It is a small squad of English players. Um, but uh, we'll see what we can do in the summer transfer window. We had a board takeover last season. Didn't invest a lot of money in it, but he's invested around about 80 million into the transfer budget that we can hopefully go try and um, utilise and improve on this squad um, whether we can flesh it out in certain positions or whether we can bring in you know, first team ready players let's go see what we can do uh, with the ins and outs we'll jump forward to the end of the summer transfer window and I'll show you what we've been able to do okay we are back at the end of the summer transfer window and the only player that I managed to bring in is Spike Britz I may have mentioned him in the last video is an English goalkeeper um, currently on the books at Manchester City in real life. We've managed to pick him up for 10 million, potentially rising to 15 to come in and do a job for us here. Uh, we already have uh, Dean Henderson, Charlie Setford, uh, James Trafford, and now Spike Britz. We've let a Conquo go uh, for £1 million. I have now four very good English goalkeepers. I know some of my senior players were upset about the squad depth in the goalkeeping area. I'm hoping that's alleviated their concerns. <sighs> Maybe not. But I, I don't, do they want me to go out and sign Aaron Ramsdale? I don't know what they want me to do. So I've done the best I can possibly do with the players that are available to me. I've let Setford go out on loan um, because we've still got three goalkeepers and he needs some game experience to develop. So I've let him go out on loan to exit a couple of other players. I've let go out. These two are new gens that come through our youth academy that are both very good. They've gone out on loan to try and get some experience. Um, a couple of other players go out on loan. I've let Kellyman go out on loan. Uh, he definitely needs some game time. He's not going to get it with us as much as I need him to. Uh, these players left on a free. Contracts were up, so they've gone. Uh, Conquo, like I've said, has gone to Wolves. James McAtee wasn't playing for us. I've let him go permanently to Sunderland for seven and a half million. And I've finally moved on one of the players that I've been struggling to get rid of since the start of this save uh, in Matthias Franca has gone to Al Kadzia, Saudi Arabia. 16.25 potentially rising to 20. Decent money. So. This is the squad, uh, Dwighty boy, still not declared who he wants to play for, so he's still down in the squad. Still looks like he's non-English, but he could be. He could be. So, he's neither at the minute. I know it says Trinidad and Tobago here, but he's not declared for either nation. Yet. So, if he does declare for Trinidad, he'll be gone. While he's still got the option of declaring for England, I'm keeping him. So, this is the squad, not really changed. Like I said, Sprite Brits is in. Um, a conqueror's gone. That's it. So, let's go see how we've done in the first half of the season with the squad. Our first game following the closure of the summer transfer window was a home tie against Leeds United. And the boys played some nice football around on the edge of their box. All eventually found Ivan Tony and his low drive into the box opened the scoring. The second and final goal of the game came in the 89th minute when Harvey Barnes found Jason Blue Forest and the young striker doubled our lead and gave us all three points. Then travelled to Leicester City and Ivan Tony opened the scoring after just 26 seconds. And Tony got his second of the game after a 1-2 with Alex Scott, the through ball finding Tony in the box. He made a no mistake, 2-0. And our star striker completed his hat-trick in the 83rd minute with a nice finish from the penalty spot. 3-0 to us and on to the next game. A home tie against West Ham and a 78th minute winner from Charlie Patino gave us all three points. And a 2-0 win on the south coast thanks to Ivan Tony and Jan Bedenarek turning it into his own net. And we were quite fortunate to take a point at home to Fulham 
holding them to a nil-nil draw despite them being pretty dominant against us. And then came our first defeat of the season with a 1-0 defeat to Newcastle, Thierry Rendell Correa getting the goal on 25 minutes and we were unable to respond. We bounced back with three wins in a row though, beating Burnley 3-2, Nottingham Forest 2-1 and a comprehensive 4-1 win at home to Brentford. And a valuable point at the Emirates, managing to hold Arsenal to a 0-0 draw. Aaron Ramsdale getting the man of the match. But then we were brought back down to earth by the dominant team in the Premier League within this save. Manchester United beating us 2-0 with two goals from Rasmus Hoyland. Up next was an away trip to Everton and it took well the 74th minute for us to open the scoring. Again, there was some nice neat play and passing from the boys. Marcus Edwards was released into the box, making it 1-0. And we closed out the game four minutes later after we robbed Everton of possession in the middle of midfield. And again, we found some space and time. And Ivan Tony was on the end of another cross from Dwight McNeil. And we were taking all three points back to Crystal Palace. Ivan Tony got the only goal in a 1-0 victory over West Brom. And then we got an important three points at Ellen Road with two goals from Charlie Patino. And a Lactaro Morales own goal in the 90th minute gave us all three points at the Vitale. But our final game of 2026 ended in defeat when Aston Villa beat us 1-0 at Villa Park. The only goal of the game coming from Jacob Ramsey. Our second season in the Champions League got off to a good start away at Freiburg with Archie Gray giving us the lead with a nice finish into the top corner. Archie Gray got his second goal of the game on 37 minutes when Ivan Tony played a nice through ball onto Gray's run and he made no mistake from the edge of the box. Freiburg did get a goal back but Ivan Tony got our third goal of the game after he met a few deflections in the box on 83 minutes. And our second game also finished 3-1 in a home tie against PSV. And Selhurst Park seems to be going through a bit of a rebuild when we hosted Inter Milan. However, on 13 minutes the Italian side managed to find a way past our defence and they opened the scoring. Marcus Taram, the scorer. But Archie Gray's through ball found Ivan Tony and he made it 1-1 just a couple of minutes later. Bastoni rose above everybody from a corner and Inter Milan were back in the lead making it 2-1 on 28 minutes. But just before half time we did make it 2-2. Dwight McNeil this time playing the ball across the box past Sommer and that was the last goal of the game in a fairly even and fair point. We destroyed Wren at home with two goals from Archie Gray and two goals from Ivan Tony and a nice 4-1 win. We then travelled to Bilbao and got our third 3-1 win of the qualifying stage. And then we got our fourth 3-1 win of the qualifying stage with two late goals from Jason Blue Forest and Adam Wharton giving us all three points. And we closed out the group stage with a trip to Real Madrid and we held our own for the majority of the game despite losing 2-1 was pretty impressed with the way the boys played. When it came to domestic cup competition, it took a penalty shootout at Pride Park for us to get past Derby County. And two very late goals from Archie Gray and Callum Doyle helped us get past Leicester in the fourth round. And we relied on a penalty shootout for the second time in this cup competition in the quarter-final at Kenilworth Road, beating Luton 4-3. Well, we're doing all right. With third place, seven points behind Manchester United, who seem to be very good on this particular save. Uh, Arsenal are doing really well as well. Uh, Manchester City are just behind us. They finished fifth last season, uh, one spot behind us. So I mean, we're in there, aren't we? We're, we're amongst the big six. We've kind of replaced Chelsea in the big six. Uh, we've got Villa, Chelsea, Newcastle down here, all trying to compete up here. I think, you know, the English Premier League is very competitive in real life and that being replicated here. What I like about this particular save as well is that Manchester City are as dominant as what they are in real life. Um, I don't know if Pep is still there. No, Thomas Tuchel, uh, Tuchel, Tuchel, however you pronounce it, is currently the manager of Manchester City. Uh, manager of Manchester United is still Eric Ten Hag. 
Uh, manager of Arsenal is still Mikel Arteta. Uh, manager of Liverpool is still Jurgen Klopp. So Chelsea have Diego Simeone as their head coach. And Tottenham still have Postacoglu. Villa still, I think. Uh, no, they have Kjetil Nutzman as their manager. So, yeah, um, we're doing well. I'm, I'm pleased. I am really pleased. You know, we've not been able to strengthen the squad as uh, all, really, apart from reserve goalkeeper. We've not really been able to strengthen the squad. And like I said to you time and time again, I'm relying like Archie Gray now. I mean, look how good this, kid, this guy's becoming now. He's developing into what I would consider to be a world-class player. Uh, Tony's picked up his form again this season, 20 and 26. He's starting to get on a bit though. Um, so he's not going to progress much more, is he? Um, him and McNeil um, are doing all right again this season. Marcus Edwards on the right uh, is doing really well. Dropped off a little bit, but uh, again, starting to get to that age where you think, do we, uh, do we move him on? Uh, Rob Holding's been wonderful, but again, getting over the hill. Uh, Gay, he's been struggling with his fitness. Uh, Jason Blue Forest doing all right when I need him to. So yeah, I'm I'm content with how things are going. Let's see what we've managed to do in the January transfer window and whether we've managed to improve on this current crop of players that we've got. So I feel like we've done some smart business here. If you look on the right hand side with the player sales, we've sold Kyle Walker Peters and Harvey Barnes, and we've managed to get some significant money for those, over 80 million for them both. Uh, Walker Peters going to Chelsea for 42 million is great. He wasn't our starting right back or left back. So getting 42 million, potentially rising to 50 was good. Uh, Harvey Barnes, get, he's come back to Leicester ironically, uh, for 41.5 million is good as well and the reason why i'm saying that is because we've got harvey elliott in who <clears throat> was transfer listed at liverpool and on most fm24 saves he turns into a world-class player so i'm i'm really chuffed that we've managed to get him in he can come and play uh, on that right hand side compete with marcus edwards there but he can also play center midfield uh, so he can help cover off some of the uh like Wharton, Scott and Gray when they're tired, he can go and fill in there if we need him to. Uh Wan Bissaka I brought in on loan to cover off uh Walker Peters leaving. And Curtis Jones was available for loan as well. We brought him in and again he can play left wing or centre midfield. So I'm pleased that we've been able to bring him in and he's he's kind of a try before you buy option. I brought him in on loan. And we'll see how he does for us before we decide whether we'll spend some money on him. So, yeah, I'm I'm pleased with the business that we've done. I think that's good. We've made money and improved the squad. So, what's not to like? Um, let me show you how we did against Napoli and Real Madrid in the Champions League. Well, there you go. We beat Napoli and just lost to Real Madrid. We competed with Real Madrid. I like that. I like that. We We, we turned up and did well we did really well against them so I, you know i know we lost but we finished in the top eight so we've gone straight through to the round of 16. love it love it um and we've obviously not got a fixture yet as to who we are going to play uh because uh, they need to do the qualifying stages first so yeah i'm pleased uh with how things are going we're still third 13 points behind Man United, game in hand. We'll drop it down to 10. But yeah, um, we're doing all right. Let's go see how the second half of the season got on and what we were able to achieve. 2027 got off to the strangest of starts with a home tie against Manchester City. Lautaro Martinez gave them the lead in the 26th minute. However, we made it 1-1 just before half time. That man, Charlie Patino, found some space in the box and a neat little header past Edison made it 1-1. Ten minutes into the second half and City were back in the lead. Rafinha put the ball into the box and Julio Enciso made it 2-1. But we don't give these things up easily and Livermento rose above everybody five minutes later and it was 2-2. 
But on the 65th minute, City were back in the lead when Rafinha fired in an extraordinary shot from the edge of the box into the top corner. And we were back behind 3-2. But on the 84th minute, we made it 3-3. Harvey Elliott was played through from a long ball and his neat little finish past Edison made it 3-3. And in the 92nd minute, that man Elliott was in the box once more and his left foot drive made it 4-3 to Crystal Palace. But would you believe this Manchester City side? In the 94th minute, Lautaro Martinez got his second of the game and the scores was 4-4. But was it possible from the kickoff that we were going to clinch all three points and score a fifth goal in the 95th minute with Dwight McNeil crossing in to Archie Gray and he found the top corner and we were back in front for the second time in the game. But no, the carnage didn't stop there. And straight from the City kickoff, Manchester City drove forward. Again, that man Rafinha working wonders out on the wing. And the ball went past everybody, back to Lataro Martinez. And he scored his third of the game, claiming his hat-trick and making the score 5-5 in the 96th minute. An absolute cracker of the game, but disappointing that we couldn't hold on to claim all three points. And straight after that, we suffered defeat at Tottenham when Spurs scored all three goals to give them a 2-1 win. And next up, we entertain Chelsea, who are normally very dominant on FM24 saves. However, in this Crystal Palace rebuild, they are struggling. You wouldn't have thought that when Nkunku gave them the lead on just 23 minutes. It took well the 73rd minute, but a back heel from Patino to McNeil, and his shot somehow found a way past Sanchez. And the most hated man in the Premier League, Jason Blue Forest, was put through on 83 minutes, and he made it 2-1. And despite VAR's intervention, the goal stood, and we claimed all three points against our London rivals. And we faced Aston Villa in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup. And on the 45th minute, just before half-time, we managed to take the lead in the home tie. Ivan Tony making some room in the box and finding a way past Martinez. But we gave the ball away in the middle of the park. And Jacob Ramsey latched onto a through ball and made it 1-1. We were going through to the second leg at Villa Park, needing a win. And we got off to a great start. Dwight McNeil opening the scoring on just seven minutes. And then in the 18th minute, after some good work from Marcus Edwards out on the right, we managed to make it 2-0. Nice blast past Martinez. And suddenly, I was feeling confident that we were going through to the final. But Villa must have had a bit of a rollicking at half-time. And somehow, on 55 minutes, Diaby managed to find a way past Williams. Villa were back in the game. It was 2-1. They began to pepper the goal. And on 71 minutes, Nelson's free kick just went over the bar. And in the 73rd minute, we managed to give a penalty away when Garassi was brought down in the box. The man himself stepped up to take the penalty, and unfortunately he made no mistake from the spot, sending Brits the wrong way. It was now 2-2 and 3-3 on aggregate. But the boys were desperate for silverware and a chance to play in a cup final, and Ivan Tony made some space in the box and put us 3-2 up in the 84th minute. Aston Villa kept peppering at us to try and get the equaliser, but in the 94th minute, Jason Blue for his lovely left foot cross found Ivan Tony, who rose above everybody and looped it over Martinez, and we booked our place in the Carabao Cup final. And in the final at Wembley, we were playing Liverpool, where we didn't get off to the best of starts, just on two minutes. Jamal Musiala, now playing at Anfield, opened the scoring. But Ivan Tony is the big man for big matches, and after a through ball from Alex, Scott was met with his right foot. Suddenly we were 1-1, and we were in with a sniff of claiming a trophy. Liverpool are full of world-class stars and none better than Mo Salah. His left foot strike after cutting inside from the right 
put Liverpool back in charge of the game. 2-1 on 28 minutes. But I keep saying that our midfield three are three of the best players in the league. And this is why Alex Scott's volley from Marcus Edwards' cross made it 2-2 in stoppage time of the first half. We were going in at half time with the scores 2-2. And on the 65th minute, Ivan Tony was there again, poking the ball home, making it 3-2 to us. And on the 79th minute, the game suddenly got a lot easier for us when Lee Ostergaard at right back fouled Dwight McNeil and it was a second bookable offence. Liverpool were down to 10 men. And in the 91st minute, Jason Blue Forest made no mistake the ex-Manchester United player making it four against Liverpool and we were League Cup champions. Claiming our first bit of silverware in this Crystal Palace rebuild with English only players. We were helped out from another own goal in a victory over Leicester. But defeat out at West Ham where we just didn't turn up, losing the game 2-1. But we achieved a fantastic point at Anfield with goals from Harvey Elliott and Marcus Edwards. Our FA Cup campaign got off to one of the better starts that we've had. A hat-trick from Marcus Edwards contributed to a 7-1 victory over Brighton. We were drawn at home again for the fourth round tie, this time entertaining Premier League rivals Tottenham Hotspur. Tino Livramento opened the scoring on 34 minutes. And just two minutes later, we were two goals up. Archie Gray this time found in the back of the net after a nice driving run into the box. Spurs, though, got one back as soon as the second half started, with Christian Romero heading home from a Kulisevsky corner. And despite Spurs trying to get back into the game, Ivan Tony is an absolute beast, and his right foot strike was unstoppable, making it 3-1. We were through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. And for the second time in the competition, we scored seven goals, Ivan Tony scoring four of them. But then we were drawn away at Arsenal in the quarter-final, and this game comes straight off the back of our League Cup win over Liverpool. And unfortunately, the team were just too tired, and Arsenal were pretty dominant, knocking us out 3-1. Things in the Premier League were going okay though and we managed to claim a point at home to Newcastle, holding them to a 0-0 draw. We then followed that up with two other 0-0 draws, but this time away at Burnley and away at Fulham. Next up we entertained Nottingham Forest and we kept our fourth clean sheet in a row, but this time we managed to score four goals, Charlie Patino opening it up on just two minutes. And Patino got his second of the game when he robbed Omidabli on the edge of the box and it was 2-0 on 49 minutes. And young left back Dwight Williams managed to get a deflected shot off Weyer, making it 3-0 on 66 minutes. And Jason Blue Forest completed the route. Again, left foot strike past Turner. We were taking all three points in a 4-0 win. A single goal from Dwight McNeil was enough to give us all three points on the road to Brentford. And then we had a mixed bag for the remaining six games of the Premier League campaign, winning three and losing three, with defeats coming against Arsenal, Manchester United and Aston Villa, but victories against Everton, West Brom and Bournemouth. And we drew Celtic in an all-British tie in the next round of the Champions League, and Kyogo got them off to a wonderful start with a fantastic strike from the edge of the box. But the big man for big matches managed to get on the end of an Harvey Elliott cross, and we made it 1-1 one, one on 57 minutes. And in the 93rd minute, we got an all-important winner, Dwight McNeil, on the end of Jason Blue Forest Cross. And we were 2-1 up, heading into the home tie. The home tie turned out to be just as tricky as the away one. Harvey Elliott opened the scoring after just three minutes. Celtic equalised just before the break, though, with Oh Hyung Gyo making it 1-1. And Celtic levelled the tie on the 80th minute when Matt O'Reilly's fine strike made it 2-1 and 3-3 on aggregate. But we were very fortunate and in stoppage time, somehow, we were awarded a penalty in the 94th minute. And again, 
the big man for big moments stepped up to take the penalty and he made no mistake to make it 2-2 on the night and putting us through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League where we'd face Paris Saint-Germain for the second season in a row and after travelling to the Parc de Prince we suffered a 2-0 defeat that we had to try and reverse at home and if any team is going to try and reverse this it's going to be my set of English boys Harvey Elliott on 9 minutes gave us all important hope and then on 23 minutes, Archie Gray scored an absolute worldie from the edge of the box and the tie was level. With no further goals, the game went into extra time. But as soon as the whistle blew, we were on the attack. And Archie Gray made it 3-1 on the night and it was possible that we could be going through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. But after being on the attack again, Paris Saint-Germain managed to rob us and Mbappe played through to Ugarte and all of a sudden it was 3-1 and we were heading for penalties. It felt like one of the longest penalty shootouts in Champions League history. I thought it was never going to end. Every time we scored, Paris scored. Every time we missed, Paris missed. But eventually we won 9-8. And in the semi-finals, we were drawn against our English Premier League rivals, Manchester City. And the first tie was away at the Etihad, and Ivan Toney was brought down by Gavardiol on 17 minutes. And the man who was fast becoming a fan's favourite made no mistake from the spot, giving us a 1-0 lead. And the score remained the same throughout the entire 90 minutes, with Dean Henderson claiming the man of the match. Manchester City had to come and beat us at Selhurst Park, which was no easy feat. However, former City boy Callum Doyle found Bernardo Silva in the box after just 21 minutes. And City had the chance through Letaro Martinez to make the tie level on aggregate. But Dean Henderson held strong and saved the penalty. Manchester City didn't really have much of a response and the next major highlight didn't happen while the 85th minute Harvey Elliott and Jason Blue Forest combining down the right and Elliott scored the only goal of the game we were 2-0 up on aggregate and we were going through to the Champions League final where we'd face Real Madrid We'd already played Real Madrid once in the Champions League this season and we lost that match 2-1 in Madrid. However, this time we were on a neutral ground. But Madrid did open the scoring on 28 minutes after some nice little set-piece play from the free kick. Valverde converted from close range. On 33 minutes, the score was level after Adam Wharton's low strike from 30 yards out took a deflection past Courtois. And the score was 1-1. And I've said it all season, you need big players for big moments and big matches. And there's none bigger at Crystal Palace at the minute than Ivan Tony. That man made it 2-1 on 37 minutes. And we were actually in the lead in a Champions League final. Real Madrid continued to pepper us and dominate the game for the majority. And Strand Larsen equalised in the 82nd minute. VAR reviewed the footage and it turned out Vinicius Junior was offside. The goal was disallowed and the score stayed 2-1 until the end of the game. And Crystal Palace were Champions League winners. There was absolute despair, wasn't there, when we lost the Conference League final two years ago. How have we managed to win the Champions League? I just, uh, I, I, I've said it time and time again. I do feel like FM24 is the easiest version of Football Manager we've had for a long time. And providing you've got a decent tactic and you've got half decent players, you're able to obviously motivate them in the right way, pick the right players for the right positions. I think you can you can achieve great things. I know we've not won the league yet. That's it's obviously difficult over a thirty-eight uh, game system, but you know 
<laughs> so one off games against Real Madrid. And we only just lost to them 2 1, didn't we? In the Bernabeu and the uh, in the league phase. So this is just a, um, absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon. And I said at the start of this, if we won the Champions League or the league, we'd probably give up the save, but I'm really enjoying it. And I want to win the league. I want to try and focus on winning the league before we give this save up. So I think, I think we need to go win the Premier League before we stop doing it. Winning the Champions League is just... You know, it's great, don't get me wrong. Absolutely wonderful achievement that I just never expected after, what, four seasons? Uh, with an English-only Crystal Palace. I say English-only. But, you know, to be fair to the lad, I don't think he played, did he? Um, no, he didn't play. He was out injured. <coughs> so... I still not decided. Make your mind up, Dwighty boy. Are you coming to England? Or are you going to go play for Trinidad and Tobago? Because I think, with the way this lad's developing, he could be England's left back. 19 years old. Look how, look how good he is at the minute. He's turning into a good player. He's going to be probably my first choice left back next season if he becomes English. So, yeah. Um... We've done good on the Champions League. <laughs> the Champions League. Dearie me. But we finished fourth in the league and we, we did finish 20 points behind Manchester City. So the, uh, Behind Manchester United, sorry. So there is a bit of work to do. They won nine more games more than us. They didn't drop many points when it comes to drawing. They either won or lost. And that's our downfall, really. We do draw quite a lot of games um, and we've lost eight games again this season. So... Yeah, a bit of work to do uh, in terms of finances. Um, we've got around about £60 million to spend. Uh, not much in the bank, but hopefully um, we can do some sales as well. Help bolster this up a little bit uh, and try and sign a couple of players. Uh, in terms of Curtis Jones, I don't think I'm going to sign him just yet. I might see what else is available out there. He's done all right for us, don't get me wrong. Um, played 12 games. Premier League games uh, and contributed four goals. But yeah, he's he's, he's done alright for us. But you know, if I'm going to be spending essentially my full allowance on one player, I think it needs to be somebody else. But we'll see what else is available. Uh, but for now, I don't think Bissaka or Jones will be coming to us on a permanent basis. But we'll see. You, you, you never know. Uh, and of course, it was great to win the EFL as well. I thought we'd get past Aston Villa, and we did, uh, albeit difficultly, and it hard for ourselves. But yeah, a nice 4-2 win against Liverpool. I know they had the man sent off, but we're already 3-2 up at that point. Um, and that just saw the game out for us. But yeah, two trophies in the bag. Uh, first trophies of this save. It's taken us four seasons, but we've managed to get a League Cup and a Champions League. Okay, though. And a Champions League under his belt here at Crystal Palace. So let's um, see how we go. And in terms of uh, what's happening with the club, so they've cancelled the expansion plan. So originally they were going to expand the stadium, but they've cancelled it because there is a plan to build a new one. So they want to replace Selhurst Park, um, which kind of makes sense for the, the way the club's been going and growing uh, in terms of uh, continental football. So, yeah, they're, they're just looking at it at the minute, so nothing's set in stone. They're just looking at investors and things like that. But uh, as a consequence, they have cancelled expansion plans for the stadium while they look at new grounds. Uh, not interested in improving the youth facilities just yet, which is disappointing. Uh, so as things stand, it is just the youth facilities that we need to try and <coughs> improve and then maybe obviously get a bigger stadium. It's currently worth 33000 if we can get like a 60,000 seat stadium uh, that's named after me, would be <laughs> would be great. Uh, and why wouldn't it be? Look, I'm on the favoured personnel. I need to be up here. I won the Champions League. I could be a legend. Why am I only a favoured personnel? 
I should be a legend. Even Wilfred Zaha is a legend. Julian Speroni is a club legend. Come on. Bobby Marx should be a club legend for Crystal. But anyway, that is it. Uh, thank you for watching. Really do appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.